What's up, y'all? Of course, you already know someone defending John MacArthur, defending Grace Community Church, is was going to be the usual suspects. Well, here we are. Um, this young lady is a part of a group that I basically infamously called the mob. These are one of the individuals that that were uh, responsible in slandering Eileen Gray, defaming her questioning whether or not her story was true regarding the abuse and just bottom line defending uh john MacArthur and grace to you and grace community church and so if you already been watching and been following the the stories regarding john MacArthur, grace community church han cho former elder at grace community church uh gave an exclusive uh story to christianity today outlying years and years of domestic abuse cases and situations re involving uh, members at Grace Community Church, and particularly with Eileen Gray. Uh, he was asked to do an investigative uh, study uh, on the situation, and when he did it, the elders at Grace Community Church, including John MacArthur, uh, dismissed it. And basically gave him an ultimatum, told him to either to to back down from his findings or to step down. But this young lady right here um, has questions for Pastor Cho, when he, which she should be having questions for is John MacArthur and Phil Johnson and the rest at Grace Community Church and those who support uh, and trying to cover up the abuse scandals that have been consistent and have been incessantly going on. At that church but let's take a listen and i'll give commentary um as this video progresses moving on lastly we have grace community church where pastor john MacArthur is the senior pastor what has happened this time around well we have hong cho hong cho is the former elder at grace community church he was there from 2014 till april of 2022 according to hong shun he resigned his position as an elder because of his convictions and he was not uh, uh stop right there it wasn't because of his convictions it's because of the canon of scripture my sister uh it was because of sin that's what it was because of uh the word of god affected his convictions, and he could not sit back and allow the cover-ups to continue on at Grace Community Church. And this is why he decided to speak up and, and implore the elders, including John MacArthur, to make this situation right, to do justice, in quote, with what was uh, Elder uh, Han Cho's advice and admonition to the elders at Grace Community Church, all 37 of them uh able to uh agree on certain things with the elders with things that transpired there this why didn't they do, why didn't they agree is the is the question you would think if it was clear sin these men would be able to agree with what the word of god says regarding how we are to treat people who have been falsely accused and eileen gray was absolutely beyond question falsely accused so it wasn't just some mere disagreement that caused Elder Cho to decide to leave. It was because they refused to handle the situation biblically and to make right the things that they've done wrong years ago. This time around, exactly a month before the Shepherds Conference, this is a big deal when it comes to the uh, to the ministry at uh, Grace Community Church. He has come out and uh, spoke to Christianity Today, where Russell Moore is the chief editor. What does that have to do with anything? So what? I don't care if it was Mickey Mouse. I don't care if it was Russell Simmons. What does that have to do with the facts of this situation and the facts of this case, my sister? I mean, and, and if y'all notice, it's when she makes these little name dropping comments, it's to dismiss the the seriousness and the veracity of the of the statements that Elder Cho has made that he himself was aware of once it was brought to his attention, these abuse uh, allegations and actual uh, abuse cases that had occurred. So it doesn't matter who's the chief editor 
of Christianity today. What matters is, is what is being said true? That's the question. So I'm watching Russell Moore. According to Hong Shong, Grace Community Church, the elders mishandled uh, abuse cases and they mishandled the... Um, the gray situation we covered uh, we covered that story before so what happened this happened now is 21 years ago there was a woman who was uh disciplined and her husband according to the story uh i mean like you know they went to court he was indicted right now he's in jail they was abusing the children but uh you know this this stuff was already reported i'm just giving you guys the highlights but according to hong cho he want yeah uh, he's a lawyer by professional as well he was given the file to investigate this situation and he did and he gave the recommendations to the elders grace community church has 40 or 38 elders according to hong Shou, john MacArthur told him and i quote just forget it well do you believe that do you believe that's that what john MacArthur told him I think that's pretty significant, don't you think? For a man to tell an elder who was requested to investigate, and then when he comes back with an investigative information and recommendations to make right the things that they've done wrong, um, MacArthur tells this man to just forget it or forget about it. Why? If you ask someone to do a, a, a job or to run a run do a task and then now they've done it and now they make the necessary findings and recommendations and then you dismiss it and ignore it what does that say about your character not you meaning you sister but you meaning john MacArthur and the elders at grace community church because in that same report they dismissed julie royce's report and i know how you feel about julie royce too but here's a question people like you and the mob y'all don't have you know, I guess you don't have the desire to cam up with individuals like me and others who are willing to challenge and to go uh, to bat for the facts of this case, which is clear. Eileen Gray was assaulted. Her children were assaulted and sexually assaulted. Other victims, other uh, members of Grace Community Church who have reported abuse, domestic abuse and, and so forth, reported their cases. Those were being dismissed, overlooked, downplayed. So is this something that you really consider to be an issue of importance or are you just trying to report information just for clickbait? I'm just concerned. I have questions too. Well, uh, we were not there. Who said what, where and when? We do not know. We do not, I do not know. Okay, I'm just reporting to you what Christianity today has said. So, according to Hong Cho, there's other women who, has, who have also come forward to him to tell him that Grace Community Church mishandled their uh, abuse situation uh, in their marriages. Okay? So, according to him, he wants uh, Grace Community Church to do something about this situation. Don't you want Grace Community Church to do something about the situation? Berean Babes? That's, that's the name she goes by. But how can you be a Berean if you're not wanting to check the facts and hold fast to that which is true? But I digress because your name is very misleading. I've been watching your work, particularly regarding, regarding this situation here. But I guess my question to you is, is you know, do, do, you, do you really believe that these women are lying? I mean, do, would you honestly stand in front of these people and dismiss what they've said because you're defending John MacArthur? I mean, I'm just I'm just curious because I, I have yet to hear people like you, April Chapman, Michael Williams, uh, Ricky Gantz, uh, Dilwell Christian, uh, Jason Whitaker, Ricky Caldwell, you know, the mob. When are you guys going to come forward and, and, and apologize for making these false accusations against Julie Royce, against Eileen Gray and others who stood in defense of this woman and her and her character? Once the facts of this case were made known. That that is really the question that I have for you. 
because it seems to me that you are still defending those who are guilty instead of defending those who are innocent. All right. And I leave that to you. You guys, you can, you know, make your conclusions and everything. If more stuff comes about it, we'll be sure to report it. John MacArthur is a big deal. Grace Community is a big church. We're not going to leave no stone unturned. But these are the questions. No, you, you kind of have been leaving stones unturned. Yeah, you kind of have. Um, because the, the facts are clear. So when are you going to address these stones that you refuse to turn over? That I do pose, that I do have for uh, Elder Hong Chong. One, he's an elder. So if he's saying something that happened, that took place uh, during the elder meetings, this, that, and the third, well, we just cannot dismiss it. But we also want to hear the other side, uh, what the other elders um, said. Uh, then why don't you ask them? Because we want to hear their side too. They don't want to talk. So you're not going to hear the other side. So let's just let's just kill that. You're not going to hear the other side. The other side has already made clear what they're not going to do. And that is say nothing. Phil Johnson has made it clear that they have nothing to say. The the church, the Grace Community Church, the elder of the Grace Community Church already rendered a statement saying that they're not going to respond to any online, quote unquote, attacks and and things of that nature. So they're, you're not going to get anything. Nothing. We all want answers, but they're not willing to give it. Even people like John Harris who, who also said on record that it would be nice if they were to give a statement. Even last year, they gave superficial, surfacey statements regarding the, the accusations and, and, and allegations and abuse of Eileen Gray, which was true. The woman had nothing to lie about. She had police reports. She had documented evidence for years. So now, you, you wanted to hear the quote unquote other side. The other side have already spoken by their silence and dismissal and deflection. All these things transpired before um, uh, Elder Cho was an elder. So things took place before he was a member at Grace Community Church. That's a fact. And number two, uh, Elder Cho was at Grace Community Church from 2014 to 2022. Why did he resign in 2022? Why didn't he resign between, why didn't he resign in 2014? What about 2015? What about 2016? What about 2017? What about 2018? What about 2019? What about 2020? Why did it took him this long? If he knew that this was not good, that the elders of Grace Church did. Oh, I'm glad you asked that question because you just answered your own question. First of all, he said he wasn't there. When all these things happened, but when he was there, I don't know, maybe possibly based on what he said, he couldn't sit back and let this go on any longer. So at least the man came forward, sister. At least he spoke up and spoke out in defense of these people, these women, these children, these families. I give the I give the brother props on that. But. You can't say that this man is wrong for doing what he did and saying what he said now, because at least he's doing it. But he was not an elder when all of this stuff was going on. You just said that. So you can't fault him for something that he had no knowledge of. And then now, once he is now dealing with the situation and has been tasked and asked to deal and investigate these cases, particularly the Eileen Gray case. He did it. They didn't like the findings. He decided to resign because they gave him an ultimatum. Those are the facts. It's, it's, in, the, it's, in, the, it's in the report. So please don't make this seem like this brother is wrong for finally coming out. At least he's coming out. And there will be other men that would, that would be coming out if they were not afraid of the consequences. And if they were not afraid of having their lives destroyed. So I get it, brother, props for that. But where's the rest of these other men? Why aren't they coming forward? Why aren't they speaking out? Why isn't John MacArthur speaking out? Why don't you have questions for MacArthur? That's what I want to know. Why are you having questions for Cho, but you don't have questions for MacArthur? I'll wait. Another question. Why are the women going to Elder Cho now 
Why didn't they go to Elder Cho when he was at Grace Community Church? Because he came forward and after he left the church, other women decided to come to him after he investigated the Eileen Gray case. It's, it's, it's pretty clear, sister. It's, it's in the report. And he also said by God's providence, because you do believe in God's providence, right? I mean, you being reformed like I am. We believe in God's sovereignty and God's providence or is it just when it's convenient for us. I don't know. I'm just asking. But he said it was he believes it was God's providence that after he left Grace Community Church, after he decided to resign because he could not stay there and allow them to cover up the abuse and cover up sin. God in his providence and his sovereignty, he allowed these other people to connect and get in contact with him. And that's why. Those people came forward. Another question. Elder Cho is a lawyer. He knows how the system works. If this information has been brought to him, is him going to Christianity today to give them this news, this exclusive? Is that the right place for these women to get the help? Uh, yeah. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. Uh, they were told not to report it to the police. It's in the report system. They were discouraged for holding these people accountable, these men, their husbands accountable. It's in the report. So it seems to me you, you keep putting the 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 burden on the the ones that have been offended and been violated instead of the ones who have been victimizing and doing the violating. They went to Christianity today, or particularly Elder Cho went to Christianity today to tell his story after after several attempts for Elder Cho to implore and to exhort and admonish the elders at Grace Community Church, including John MacArthur, to make it right, and he didn't. And so actually, Elder Cho was on biblical ground and biblical standing. He went to a Christian organization. He didn't go to TMZ. He went to Christianity Today. He didn't go to Entertainment Tonight. He didn't go to Jimmy Fallon. He didn't go to Jimmy Kimmel. He went to Christianity Today to deal with a Christian issue that was being covered up by a Christian church. That's why. Why hasn't Elder Cho go and report Grace Community Church to the proper authorities? And, and, and what are the, who are the proper authorities? Who are the proper authorities? He, 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 he did his part. And he said in the report that depending on how they handle this, this article, handle this exclusive, will determine whether or not how far it goes with him. He said that in, the, in, his, in his statement, actually his Facebook post. All you have to do is look at it. Yeah, it's right there. So that charges can be brought against Grace Community Church. You, you don't want charges to be brought against Grace Community Church, sister. Come on. Stop it. You don't. You don't. Since last year, y'all have been attacking Eileen Gray, have been attacking other individuals that wanted to hold uh, MacArthur and the elders at Grace Community Church responsible. So let's let's kill the 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 sanctimonious attitude and acting as though that you you want justice for for these women. Because if you did, you would not have been responding the way you have been in defense of a man who put a woman out of the church. And you had the temerity and the audacity in this video to say that. That had they known differently, they would have done, they would have handled her differently. No, they had enough information to know that you don't put a person out of the church who did nothing wrong. You put people out of the church who refuse to repent. So her refusing to take back her abusive, her abusive husband is not sin on her part. That's not how we do church discipline. And you definitely should know that. Against the elders, the Grace Community Church, against John MacArthur himself, so that he can go to the court of law and be convicted if he's found uh, guilty. And if he's found innocent, be exonerated. You already know he's not innocent. You already know he's not innocent. Everybody named Mama know that John MacArthur and Grace Community Church is not innocent because the facts are clear. There's been cover up. And this is just on, on the abuse. We're not even going to talk about finances. We're just dealing with the abuse cases here. John MacArthur is guilty. 
He knows he's guilty. That's why he refused to respond because he has his men. He has his flunkies. He has his yes men covering for him, doing his dirty work, i.e. Justin Peters, i.e. Phil Johnson. And the like. That's why. So McGarth's not going to be convicted. He didn't do anything other than not handle these men who were doing wrong and sinning against their wives. That's the sin. So you, you, you're asking the wrong questions here. That is not what Dr. Uh, Elder Cho has done. There was no police report that Elder Cho has filed. Why would Elder Cho need to file a police report? Do, do you understand how the law works? He can't make he can't make victims or make those who have been uh, um, who have been made um, victims or violated file anything. But he he went through the, the proper channels. He he's he's a lawyer, so he knows what he's supposed to do. Him and six other lawyers, I believe, in the report that is stated. So he went through the proper channels. He went through the proper steps. Now. Could it have been done soon as far as him, you know, reporting it? Yeah, it could have been. But God in his sovereign providence allowed it to come forward now. And he's, he took the, the, the biblical and appropriate steps to hold these men responsible, to hold Grace Community Church responsible. And I would think that's what you would want, right? Maybe not. At least up to this point. Those are the questions that I pose, ladies and gentlemen. Now. If everything that Elder Cho has said, we, the other, uh, the men who were involved in this abuse of these women, they also have a story. Anybody, an accuser has a right to face, uh, to, to face the accuser. Well, that's, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, the accuser does have a right to face the accused when they want to face them. See, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 1, sister, that the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, the, the accused has the right to face their accuser if they're bold enough to face them. Those who have, those who have uh, done the accusing have no problem facing the accused. It's the accused that have the huge problem facing the accuser. So maybe you need to, you need to, you, need to, you know, encourage John McArthur, once he, uh, if the Lord gets him out of his sick bed, doesn't look like it, it's, it's very promising at this point. And I'm not throwing any shade. I'm just stating the facts. Or maybe you can ask Phil Johnson once he gets better. Ask them, why don't, why, don't they, why don't they face their accusers? Phil Johnson had opportunity. He had ample opportunity to face the accuser, uh, Julie Royce, on social media. Because, you know, <laughs> Phil Johnson is, is notorious for... Uh, clapping back at people on on Twitter. So, where is his case? Why hasn't he come forward and 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 defend? I mean, again, you you're you're saying that the 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 accuser the accused has the right to stand before the accuser. Well, tell him to come on up. We're out here waiting, been waiting. It's them that's holding up this whole process of giving their quote unquote side. Okay, and it, it's biblical, and that's what happened in the court of law. So these men who are doing these uh, abuses of these women, we want them to be brought to justice and to be punished accordingly. So these women have come forward. They've uh, they've gone to uh, uh, to Cho. I hope that Elder Cho has advised those women to go and report to the proper authorities, not to Jury Royce and not to Christianity Today. Um, why would you think he would not do that? Ha have you read the report? I mean, really, ha have you read the report, my sister? Because it seems like you haven't. Matter of fact, several women have gone to the authorities. And again, the elders at Grace Community Church dissuaded and discouraged these women from going to the authorities and would charge them with being unforgiving if they did. Why don't you ask Carrie Hardy? Why don't you ask Bill Shannon? Why don't you ask these men? Ask them, why are they stopping these women from going to the authorities? You're asking the wrong people the wrong questions. When are you going to do a video asking questions to Bill Shannon? 
to John MacArthur, to Phil Johnson, to Kerry Hardy, to Todd Friel, to Justin Peters. Why don't you ask those men those questions? But to the proper authorities, and yes, if they want to go and report to the newspaper, that's a fair game. But we want these women to get the help that they need. And they're not going to get the help they need at Jury Royce or at Christianity Today for that matter. And how do you know that? Um, actually, as a result of these women, particularly Eileen Gray sharing her story, uh, this, this, this basically created a snowball effect of other women coming forward. See, you, you, don't, you don't decide how a person gets help. See, God, he uses means to help and to minister to his people. And it was far too long and it was long overdue that these women were to get the help that they needed. And so praise God for Christianity today. Praise God for people like uh, uh, Elder Cho. Praise God for people like Eileen Gray, that God allowed this situation to happen for her to be able to help other women get out of the situations and the abuses that they are in. So please don't try to tell people how they are to get the help that they need if you have not gone through it yourself. And even if you have and you chose to deal with it your way, that's your way. But it's not the way. Not only that, uh, according to the Gray situation, he went to court and the jury of, uh, of his peers of that gentleman found him to be guilty. And right now he's still in prison. So according to the justice system, the justice system took place and the guy is paying uh, uh, for his price. They're conflicting evidences uh, about this issue and stories about this issue. Uh, the fact of the matter is even uh, Gray herself, the lady, Erin Gray herself, also abuses children. Uh, she did not sexually abuse him. Um, spanking the children is not considered as abuse. She did not, she did not brutally assault, brutally beat her children like David Gray did. So please get the facts straight on that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. And anything that she's done, she's repented and made right for, but hers was not incessant. Hers was not something that she was doing and, and causing intentional harm to a child where she had to go to, go to, go to, go to court and have her rights taken away as a parent, let alone go to jail and have her rights taken away from her and her freedoms taken away from her as a parent. So get the facts straight, please, please, please get the facts straight. Needless to say, she was disciplined. Ladies and gentlemen, church discipline is a church ordinance. According to Grace Community Church, the information that they had at the time did warrant church discipline. What information did they have at the time that warranted this woman to be put out of the church? Berean babes, please tell me. What information did this church have to put Eileen Gray out? Her refusal to take back her unrepentant, abusive, Husband, that was grounds. You're telling me that was biblical grounds for John MacArthur to put this woman out of the church? Please tell me you have more information than that. Please. Please don't tell me you're telling these people in this video that John MacArthur was biblically justified of putting an abuse woman out of of a church where she should have been protected and covered instead of putting the abuser out. Please tell me you have more information or more sense than that. Please. Please tell me you're not saying this with a straight face that this woman received the justice due to her because she refused to take back an abuser. You're telling me that that was biblical church discipline, that justice was met out to her fairly. That's what you're telling me. Please stop the foolishness. Because that is not biblical church discipline. That is an abuse of biblical church discipline. David Gray should have been put out, not Eileen. Stop it. If they had the information they have now, would they have disciplined that lady? The answer would be no. The answer is, yeah, they had the information and they still chose to handle this woman as though she was in sin, which is why Elder Cho told the elders and John MacArthur to make this right. And they refused. Even to this day, they refused. So let me ask you this question, Berean Babes. Now that they have the information, now that they have the facts that this woman was not wrong and that David Gray was wrong, why haven't they come forward? 
Why haven't they apologized? Why haven't they asked this woman for forgiveness? Why have they not publicly made right what they have done wrong? Why? And why aren't you asking them that question? I mean, the arrogance of you. It is sickening for people like yourself acting as though you are speaking truthfully and that you are really concerned about people that are going through abuse and being hurt by leadership that they're supposed to be led by in the things of God, supposed to be uh, shepherded and fed and protected. You're sitting here and acting as though you really care and you really don't. And it shows in your response and your attitude and your answers to this situation. Let's not forget that the church, uh, a grace community church is not part, it's not uh, part of an SBC where they have to report the things to the, um, to the conversion or whatever is a standalone independent church. So, so because you are an autonomous church, that means you have autonomy to treat people any kind of way you want. Is, is that what you're saying? I hope that's not what you're saying. Yeah. Churches are autonomous, meaning that we don't report to an, like, like the Catholic church. We don't report to a pope, although people consider John MacArthur the evangelical pope, evangelical pope, but I digress with that point. But no, churches don't report to a main church. But that does not mean that churches that are autonomous have the right to treat or to do whatever they want to do to its congregants, to its members as, as they will. Because the standard of what God wants his church to run is in his word. It's not with MacArthur, it's not with you, and it's not with me. It's a big church. It's a mega church. Okay. Biblical counseling is not the same as counseling that people get out there. Whenever people have struggles within marriage, when they go to biblical counseling, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing they're not going to hear, they're not going to hear like, you know what? You need to divorce. That's not going to be the thing they'll hear. I took biblical counseling and I can tell you that people, if somebody does not know the scripture or does not, go, does not know God, they wouldn't understand it. Because they're operating under biblical principles where the conciliation is at the table, forgiveness is at the table, overlooking the wrong is at the table. Okay? Um, let's unpack that for a second, ma'am. Those three things, reconciliation, forgiveness, and uh, forgiveness. We said forgiveness, reconciliation. Let me, let me rewind it back. Make sure I got your, your full statement here. Yes. Where the conciliation is at the table, reconciliation. forgiveness is forgiveness. at the table. Okay. Overlooking the wrong is at overlooking the, table. the wrong. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Yeah. I so so overlooking the wrong. Let's talk about those three things: forgiveness, reconciliation, overlooking the wrong. You can't have reconciliation without forgiveness, and forgiveness must be based upon confession of sin and repentance. Since you you went to biblical counseling, and I have too, you cannot have reconciliation until first and foremost there is a confession of the offense and repentance therefore now producing or opening the door to reconciliation overlooking a sin or overlooking a fault depends on whether or not that sin is a great sin or a small sin the bible tells us clearly that he who overlooks a transgression seeks love. So there, there are certain things that we don't have to always um, make a big issue out of. But abuse, domestic abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, abuse of any kind is not a small issue. It is a big issue. So we overlook faults that are minor, and that is dependent upon the individual or individuals that are being affected by it. So don't don't give this 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 blanket statement regarding forgiveness, because forgiveness is not based upon uh, whether or not the elders of your church tell you to forgive somebody. No, forgiveness is based upon whether or not that individual who sinned against me has acknowledged their sin. Luke chapter 17, verse three to four. And has repented of it the same way that God through Christ has, has forgiven us through confessing our sins and turning from it. And you can achieve all these things. You are not supporting women to be abused. You are not supporting children to be abused because the scripture sp uh, speaks against those things. Yeah, the scripture speaks against it, but, but grace doesn't. You don't speak against abuse. You don't speak against mistreatment of people if you tell them to go back to the abuser, sister. You need, you, need to, you need to touch on that a little bit more. So 
uh, ought to say that we do not know the side of the story of these men who abuse these women. Uh, we do know the story. The evidence and the facts are clear. We do know. We know that Grace, we know that MacArthur, they refuse to answer. They refuse to respond. They refuse to do it. So it's not, it's not the individual who has come forward that needs to say anything. It's those who have been charged with these serious offenses and even crimes to come forward, and they refuse to do so, which makes them look guilty because they are. We do not know the story of the elders at Grace Community Church. Those things they need to come in the open should uh, should we come to it. So uh, if more stuff is coming, we'll be here to bring out to you guys uh, these stories that is news. And we have to remember, right now we're living in the time of church 2 movement. We cannot overlook those things. Everything is attributed to uh, it's either racism or it's abuse or it's this, that, it's the third. Last question that I have for Elder Cho. Would he want the things that he did 20 years ago, somebody to come in today and demand uh, a compensation or apology or this, that, and the third? Ladies and gentlemen, I do not want the things I did 10 years ago to be counted on me now. Uh, Ma'am, you don't know anything about biblical counseling. You know nothing about sin and repentance. Because what are we going to do when we stand before God? You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, where we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us will give an account for the things we've done in our body, whether good or bad. Sin does not have an expiration date until or unless it has been confessed and repented of. Do, do, you, do you not read Psalm 32? Have you not read what David himself said when I kept silent about my sin, how it affected him physiologically? how it affected him psychologically. And the Bible says in Psalm 32 that he, he, until he confessed his sin, God was dealing with him. He said, but when I confess my sin, then my vitality returned. Then he started feeling healing and, and wholeness again. It doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago, 10 minutes ago, 10 decades ago. It doesn't matter. Sin is covered when sin has been addressed and dealt with. Please stop giving people this, this, this wrong and erroneous doctrine that because you did something 20, 30 years ago and you refuse to repent of it and confess it as being wrong, that, that's, that it doesn't matter. It does matter. It definitely does matter. It matters to God. And it should matter to us if we've done wrong to people and we know and they know that we've done wrong and then we refuse to make it right. How is that biblical Christianity, my sister? But you claim to study biblical counseling. Right. I do see that is Elder Cho, whatever he's looking for, asking for, he is applying and biblical practices but cultural practices according to him all these things that he's doing the lord has led him to be doing these things so he's just doing what the lord has commanded him to do ladies and gentlemen i'll be a fool to stand in the way of god of what god is doing if what uh, if what elder cho is doing is what God is commanding him to do, is what God is, is leading him to do, it will prevail. It, it already is prevailing, sister. People have already come forward. So I agree with you on that one. Will come to pass. And nobody, not even John MacArthur himself, can stand in the way of that. Yeah, he's been trying to stand in the way of it, and that's not been going too well for him. But he's been trying. Him and his ilk have been trying. But if what Elder Cho is doing, is not of the Lord. Is not of the Lord. It will also come to pass. Yeah, but what he is doing is of the Lord because he's making it right. I mean, this is why he he said in his in in the article that he he couldn't just forget it. Quoting John MacArthur, he couldn't just forget it. 
he was advised to sin and he said he couldn't do that. So this, this, this will continue on. God is definitely by his grace with Elder Cho, but he's not with John MacArthur and Grace Community Church leadership. Just like those disciples, right? Uh, when they were escorted. Um, one of the high priests says, if what they're doing is not of God, we, it, it shall come to pass. If it is of the God, we'll find ourselves fighting against what God is doing. So all in all, we want uh, truth to come out, restoration to take place, forgiveness to take place. And if there's anything that's not right to be made right in, in the way that honors God, not in the way that pleases the culture. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about all these things. If you ask me, I do not know. We want to know more, but uh, that is the story that's that, that that has been reported. But so that's pretty much what she has to say. Um, I'll, I'll just I'll just say this, and then I'll wrap this part up. It's it's pretty clear based on the information that we do have and that we have received um, from Elder Cho and others. Uh, that these people have no reason to lie. They have not been lying. They have been telling the truth. The onus now is on John MacArthur. It's on Phil Johnson. It's on the elders at Grace Community Church. I know for a fact that there are a lot of men at, at Grace Community Church that are elders that want to come forward, but they are afraid to do so. Unfortunately, the fear of man is stronger than fear of God for some people. And they would rather see people suffer than to see their own pockets suffer. And that's unfortunate and that's sad. I want to close with this one quote. I had shared it in an earlier live uh, today, but by the time you may see this, it'll probably be a day or so later. But uh, regarding public accusations, regarding public accusations, the Prince of Preachers that we call um, Charles Spurgeon said this, quote, Standing as we do in a position which makes us choice targets for the devil and his allies, our best course is to defend our innocence by our silence and leave our reputation with God. Yet there are exceptions to this general rule. When distinct, definite public charges are made against a man, he is bound, he said he is bound to answer them and answer them in the clearest and most and most open there we go in, in the most clearest and most open uh manner to decline all investigation is in such a case practically to plead guilty and whatever may be the mode of putting it the general public ordinarily a refusal to reply as proof of guilt under mere worry and annoyance it is by far the best to be altogether passive but when the matter assumes more serious proportions and the accuser defies us to a defense we are bound to meet his charges with honest statements of fact. In every instance, counsel should be sought of the Lord as to how to deal with slanderous tongues. And in the issue of and in the issue, innocence will be vindicated and falsehood convicted. So I just wanted to just read that portion because again, there are times when we are to be silent. There are times we need to speak out. And I believe this is a time for MacArthur and Grace Community Church, the elders at Grace Community Church to, to come forward and to speak out, but they have refused to do so, which speaks to their guilt and not their innocence. So again, uh, prayers to Elder Cho, prayers to the, um, call them now, they're, they're actually conquerors. People, somebody had mentioned to me if I could start calling them not abuse survivors, but abuse conquerors, because that's what they are. They're more than conquerors through Christ, and I, I would totally agree with that. Uh, but we need to pray for those who have gone through and experienced this type of treatment and abuse, unfortunately, by the hands of professing Christians and have been mistreated by uh, so-called Christian leadership in these churches. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the response that I made to Baran Babes. Um, again, she's one of the members that I call the mob. Uh, if you support these people, I would encourage you not to support them. I would encourage you also to to admonish these people to repent. And for them to treat this situation uh, with the same balance that they treat other people that they claim to admire, love and respect. Because, again, we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. 
And the Bible says unjust weights and measures are an abomination to the Lord. The Bible says we're not to hold each other with an attitude of, of, of favoritism against the other. Those things are sin. And so we're to hold each other accountable according to the word of God and, and let the chips fall where they may and trust God with the results. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. I'm trying to see something.